Hello and welcome to my first Chef's Horn Academy um, home tutorial. Uh, my name's Tom. I've been doing classes with the Academy in the Southwest for about two years now. Um, obviously, the recent crisis has, has got everybody at home. Um, so our aim is to just put together some little videos um, so you can make stuff at home, you can still learn. Um, so today I've got something which I hope you're going to find quite exciting, uh, maybe a little bit different to what you'd normally do. Uh, so we're going to make some croissants. A couple of things you're going to want before we get started. I've weighed out my ingredients. Now's a good time to pause and take note. Ingredients. We're going to need for later some cling film, some baking parchment, and a ruler. Pause again for that equipment list. So I'll take my flour, and to that I'm going to add my salt and sugar, yeast, and then some lukewarm milk and water. If you're using dried yeast, what you would do is add um, the dried yeast to the warm milk and water, um, add the sugar as well, give that a good mix and let it stand for about 10 to 15 minutes uh, until that goes nice and frothy, and then we'll We'll add that back in. I happen to have some fresh yeast, so we're going to be using the fresh yeast. So we'll add to our flour, we'll add the salt and sugar. I'm going to add the yeast as well. And we're just going to give this a, a little mix. So that's all mixed in there nice. So I'm going to take my liquid now. Make a little well in the centre. And add that in. So just using your hand like a claw. Draw in the flour from the sides. And as it starts to come together. Be a bit more brave with it. like you need it in the bowl. So we're going to take our dough now that it's come together and we're going to turn that straight onto the work surface and start the kneading process. So you'll find it's quite a wet, fairly sticky dough. This is part of what gives the, the croissant or the croissant dough its richness really and in having that milk in there as well it's quite similar to a, an enriched enriched dough. Uh, I'm going to want to work this now for probably about 10 minutes or so just to develop that gluten which is going to help hold our croissants together give us a nice firm dough. So our dough now then we've given that a really good kneading and what we've got now is a nice smooth dough with a light shine to it nice and stretchy still pliable. What we're going to do just roll it out now into a rectangle before popping into the fridge for its, its overnight ferment or brew. So we want that rectangle to be around about 15 centimetres by around about 10 or so. Um, but what I would say is, you know, based on what sort of tin you've got for you, to keep it in. So I'm, I'm using this baking tray. So what we're going to do is Go with a very light dusting of flour. Pop our dough. Go with again a light dusting. We don't really want to dry out the dough or add too much more flour. We just want to <coughs> achieve at least a rough rectangle that we can pop into our tin. And by keeping it in the fridge overnight, we'll cool both the butter and the dough to the same sort of temperature so as they go together, they should work nicely. The secret with croissants or any type of Viennoiserie dough or laminated dough like this is not having 
the dough or the butter be too different in temperature. So the closer they are, the easier it is to work. So we've got our, our rectangle. And what we're going to do is just add it to the tray. So no need to um, clink them or, or anything in these. We're just going to be tipping it out tomorrow. So there's that part of the dough. What I'm going to do now is just clink on this. Make a bit of space for it in the fridge. So onto the preparation of the butter for our croissant dough. Two things really important for this. Uh, one of which, unsalted butter. Uh, not even lightly salted really, it will have a massive um, effect on, on the outcome of the croissants, how they taste. The other thing that's really important, I'm going to try and get this as close to the camera as I can now. On the back of the butter, where it gives you the ingredients and information about it, it will give you um, a fat content as a percentage. For these, we want to be looking at a butter with a, a fat content of at least 82%. So if I just I'll show you, it's just sort of there, really. Okay, and it might mean with the supermarkets how they are, you just sort of have to put up with what you get. Um, this one was a little bit overpriced really for what it is, but it's what we've got. Now, for this recipe, I'm going to be using half of this block. So we're just going to weigh it. And as we cut the butter, we want to slice it really, nice and thin, because what the next step is going to be is rolling that butter out into a really, really thin little slab. Well, the butter itself has been out on the side for probably about an hour or so. Um, the room's around about 20 degrees, kind of a good room temperature. And it will just help to have the butter a little bit softer for this next step. And for the thickness, you can see there, it's quite thick, it's probably, you know, a fingernail or so. So we've got our butter weighed out. What we need to prepare next is a sheet of baking parchment, which we're going to fold in such a way that we can add this butter to it. And as we roll it out, it won't uh, spill out of the edges. So we'll get a nice um, rectangle piece of butter exactly the size we want. So you can see I've pre-folded mine, but I'm going to walk you through it as well. The first thing we need to do is just refer back to our dough we just need to take some measurements. So using your ruler, just carefully measure the size of that dough as it is. Bearing in mind we're just going to roll it lightly um, tomorrow, so we'll get only a small amount bigger. So for me, the tray is measuring 20 by 30. So that dough, which fills the tray now, is 20 centimetres by 30 centimetres. So the butter going into it is only going to cover one half because to encase it will fold one half over and then just crimp the edges. So we need to make that butter into a rectangle which is 20 by 15. So to do that, take a larger piece of baking parchment than you need. This one about 60 centimetres. And what I'm doing then, I'm going to take the bottom edge and fold it over. Give it a really nice crease here. It gets a nice crisp, sharp edge to it. So we fold it in half. I'm going to take another edge. I'm going to fold that in half. So that gives us two sides. So a little better envelope. I'm going to take this side now and fold that over. So we've now sealed it on three sides, and then lastly I need to fold the top. Okay, so that gives us then a rectangle, the butt will be inside, that 
covers half of the dough, as you can see. Now we just need to open this back up, and I'll show you how to add the butter. So it can be quite confusing because there's quite a lot of panels, really. Um, but what we want to aim for is this one here. I'm going to take our butter and just one by one, just lay them out nicely. Not going right to the edge. Give yourself a few millimetres around. That will just give us room to, to really roll it out and press it into the corners. So, one by one. Just lay the butter in. And the butter, as I said before, is at room temperature. So it's just bendy and pliable. But it's not a liquid, obviously. And you can, if you need to, just sort of break bits off, make a little jigsaw, just to get it in, nice and evenly. We need to just make sure every single join, as you can see, it's quite a mosaic, really. It's completely smooth and flat. Any that we get, as we work the dough later, later on and further down the line, it will create a, a break, so we might be able to stretch the dough but not have butter consistently through. So it'll break like that and we'll get a line where there's only dough and therefore it won't puff. So fold that top edge over and then we're just repeating the same way we made the little template. And be fairly firm with it. And that's our completed little butter package there. What we want to do is just flip it over so all of the joints are on the bottom and that just means as we as we work it then it's not going to unravel and it's not going to get in the way. So to start the process off if we take our rolling pin one of the easiest ways to get it going is just to use the rolling pin almost kind of like a hammer lightly tap it to smooth the butter out. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to, to rip the paper that we spent you know 10 minutes making. But just enough to sort of help that soft butter mould. See so as you can see straight away the butter's rolling right to the edges. I'll try and get one to zoom in for you. You can see that the edge there, no butter there at the moment. We're just going to work it like this, right into that corner. And it should go fairly easy. The butter's nice and soft shouldn't really have to push too hard. If you do have to push too hard, you can always just set it aside, have a sit down and come back to it. So the next step, once it's all into the corners, and you're happy with that, it's nice and filled out, is just to make sure it's even across. So we don't want any real big lumps and bumps, you know, it can be into the corner, but it can be really thin. So you just want to work that just a little bit more, just to make sure that it's nice and even across. This will help us tomorrow when we unmould this little butter package. Because there are any places where it's too thin, it will, it will snap. So I think I'm pretty happy with that now. So we're going to pop that in the fridge overnight, same as the dough, and we'll come back to that tomorrow. So this is day two of the croissant dough now. Um, so we have, uh, we have our, our nicely rested dough, our little butter package, a um, couple of things you're going to need, uh, rolling pin back again, and just a little bit of flour just for, to help us rolling out really. Okay, so let's crack on. So I'm going to give a light dusting of flour over my surface here, and then I'm going to turn out my dough. What you can do is just keep the tray because uh, after each turn you can just pop it back in the tray. So carefully take out your, your dough and you'll notice after resting it should be really nice and pliable. It's quite a, quite a soft dough. So just a bit of dusting over, 
just make sure you notice it was a bit sticky on the bottom there. So we just want to really lightly roll this out. It's just going to make it a little bit easier if it's all even to incorporate that butter. Really important to make sure at all times that it's not sticking. You may want to stick a little, because as I said, it's quite a, a wet dough. But so you want your butter really to cover half of it, but just give a little edge around so you can actually crimp it together. We're going to fold that back on itself as well. So right now, this looks pretty good to me. We're going to work around our butter. should be, I'll just show you that, a nice even sort of plank of butter. So position that just over halfway, again, just give yourself a little bit of, of room to, um, to actually seal that in. What we're going to do is just go around that. Make sure it's really well sealed. Try and get as much of the air out as possible. And again, just make sure that's not sticking to the bench underneath. Seal. And be fairly firm with it. I know the butter's under there, but it's not going to shatter now. So we want to really make sure that's encased within that dough. And again, just check the other side. And you can see it's nicely, nicely encased. Don't want any tears at all. So that's that stage. So you successfully wrapped the dough around the butter now. And we've got ourselves a nice little rectangle. The next step is going to be just letting this gently sort of warm up, a bit more room temperature, so we can actually start to roll and um, get our lamination going. So if we roll this out now, we'll do what we call a letter fold, where we'll fold it into the centre like that, and then over, so that each time it creates three times the amount of layers you've got. So by doing that three times, we'll get our 27 layers. So what I'm going to do is just, and again it seems like it's a fair bit of flat, but they're really light dusting layers, a little bit on top. We're going to roll this out for our first fold. So being really gentle, because again, we know the dough is stretchier than the butter at this point. Sort of feel whether it's still a bit too uh, too cold or you know a bit too soft as well. If it feels like it's just giving straight away, you know that butter's too soft. What I do in that situation is best you can at the point wrap it up and put it in the fridge, even for just sort of 10 minutes or so, just to sort of firm it back up. And every now and then just give it a flip as well. Just make sure from the other side, again, no tears. And if it starts to form out from the boundary of a, a mouse rectangle, don't worry too much, because as we fold, bits like this will trim off, just using a plastic scraper. We'll trim those off. They can go actually into the centre of the dough. And at this point, it doesn't really make a big difference. We're, again, we're just looking for layers at this point. So what I do, if I get to a situation where this is too far away, my bench isn't long enough that I can roll it, 
what I usually do. Just give a little dust of your flour, just so it doesn't stick. Gently take it down, pull it back on itself. Okay, and now I've, I've got more space, I can roll that comfortably. And obviously if I don't go over there, I won't seal it up. So I can work that little bit of dough without kind of having to spin it sideways or something like that. So that to me, it's just about the right thickness there for our first fold. So I just wanna, best I can, just remove some of that flour because again, we want the dough to stick to itself now. Yeah, it doesn't have to be completely pristine empty of flour but, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top piece, I prefer to start with the top, nothing wrong with starting with the bottom, but I'm going to take this top piece now and I'm going to fold it just over a third, okay, so it covers that, leaving myself the bottom to tuck up. Now as we talked about earlier, this is sort of spread out on the sides, which again is absolutely fine. I'm going to take our plastic scraper, we're just going to cut the dough. It's nice and square. You can just leave it, okay? You can. Um, it will make it slightly more difficult to work as it's not, uh, not completely square. As you then roll it, you can see these bits here. They're also just sticking out a little bit. But they'll, they'll start to slide over the dough as you're rolling. That's just going to make it a little bit trickier to keep it nicely on top and you know give you a good idea of where you're at with the dough. So I'm taking the bottom piece now, folding it over and it should just come right to the edge there. Okay so you should have a nice Roughly square piece again. So what I'm going to do is just carefully put a little more flour, taking care not to cover the floor. <laughs> Pop that on there, and I'm going to use the heel of my hand now in a sort of quite brutal way. Just beat that all over, and that will just seal those layers together. So that concludes our first fold. Now what I would recommend at this point is if we, uh, if we clink on this, pop it back in the fridge, anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes, it kind of depends how cold your fridge is. We only really want it to be just a little bit firmer than this. You see how it's quite, quite soft now. The dough is really supple um, and if we, just start working up again. We just run the risk of that butter just eking out of, out of our nice dough. I'm going to use this reserved bit of paper just because it's here, but you can just cling film it, pop it back in your tray, and back into the fridge for yeah, 10 to 20 minutes. I've just taken the dough back out, uncovered it as well. Um, feels nice and chilled. I reckon. Uh, and it's going to be safe to roll it again now. So I'm going to go with another dusting of flour just over there. I'm going to carefully take my dough. So what we're looking to do now is again roll it out to a nice sort of longish rectangle so that we can make another fold. So we're just about there really, as difficult as it might be to see on the camera, we're somewhere about perhaps five millimetres thick or so on the dough, which is about ideal really. You've got to think, if you fold it over, it's going to be 15 mils thick when you come back to do the next roll. So we're ready to make another fold now. So again, starting from the top, I'll take the top, put it down just so it's just over a third. Make sure it's nice and flat. If it's 
curved like this and won't quite go to the edge. Again, you can be fairly firm with it. Just, just give it a little gentle pull here. Just to make sure it reaches down. You get a nice square seam there. And then do the same coming up from the top. That's it. And then just make sure it's not stuck before we start hammering it. Pop it back on here. Yeah, and that should just seal it up nicely there. If we were working with a larger quantity of dough, we could actually use our rolling pin and just get that bashing. Excellent, so again, I'm gonna wrap this up, pop it in the fridge, and give it about 10 to 20 minutes, something like that. So, onto the last, the last fold now. Um, so, dough's nicely, nicely chilled, a bit firmer. So I'm just gonna, again, probably like dusting flour, and then grab our dirt. So this should be our last folder. Giving us, uh, giving us about 27 layers. And after this, we'll just chill the dough once more before uh, rolling it out to the size we need so we can cut our, our triangles for our croissants. So I've rolled my dough out now. I've got a nice long rectangle. So, same process as before. I'm going to take the top of my dough now, fold it down. And just pull these bits out to fit. Just brush a little excess flour off there and stretch it to fit. More flour under. Okay. And that's our dough finished. So what we'll do now is just pop that back into the fridge but for a, a shorter time now really, probably only about 10 minutes, just to you know, really firm that up again, help stop it drying out too much in this process as well. And then we're ready to roll and shape our croissants. So onto the final leg of our croissants now. The dose has its three folds, so it's got the right number of layers now. So we just need to roll it out into a nice rectangle again and we're going to bring back our ruler so we can cut them into nice even triangles and um, make our croissants. So I'm going to just light the flour bench again, take the down. So what we're looking for in terms of thickness is to get back down to around about five millimeters thick. So we're going to just Gently roll this out. So we're going to aim for the rectangle to be slightly wider than it might have been before, and about as long. So that's our rectangle, really. So the thickness, if you can see, it's around about five millimeters thick, perhaps just a little thicker. And then size-wise, thirty-one centimeters, but I'd say thirty would be good about 25 centimetres there, so that looks a good size to me, so something to aim for for you. So what I'm going to do is very carefully slide this onto a chopping board here, which I'm just going to flour lightly. Okay. Yeah. 
Our ballista. Also, taken some baking trays and I've lined them with baking parchment already. So now we've got our, our rectangle, which is 25 by 30 centimetres. Now it's time to cut into triangles for the croissants, but for this we're going to need our ruler. So what you want to do is measure the bottom edge, and every 6 centimetres you make a little mark, and every, starting from 3, 9, 15, 21 and 27 centimetres along the top, make a mark as well. If you then slightly score with your knife, you'll get a triangle pattern, which will alternate, one going up, one going down, along the whole dirt. That then gives us the sort of guideline or template, if you like, to cut the croissants and, and form the triangles. So this is what your dough will look like after making the marks. So now with our marks made, we just want to lightly, very lightly, just trim up this bottom edge, just to make sure it's nice and square. And then we're going to do the top edge as well. Keep your trimmings, we can do something with those. And what that'll do is, for our base for rolling the croissants, it just gives us a nice square edge. So after marking the dough, I'm going to move on to cutting the croissants. And I'm pressing fairly firm. You don't really want to drag the knife back and forth, you just want to cut nicely through it. Okay, so just make sure it's nicely lined up before you start cutting. Cut down, cut firmly, and then just gently remove that to the side. So in doing this, you should end up with barely any waste, really. Which, as I said, it's not really waste anyway. So our next step is to form the croissants. So there's two ways, and I'll show you both. Classic croissant shaping. You take the dough, just as is, using your left hand to gently smooth and pull the dough down elongating that point. Don't pull it too hard, obviously we don't want to snap it. We just want to gently elongate that point. Okay, take our dough, and as you can see it's much longer than these now. Take it, carefully using your index fingers, start the roll, and just carefully roll this up now. all the time going to that point. You can stretch it out just a little bit. And what we get is our nicely formed croissant. So take that to the tray. Leave a bit of space around it, obviously it's going to prove. So it starts the same, using your fingers Gently stretch that point out. Just helps us get a few more twists on there. Gets us more layers. Okay. So after elongating, take our knife and just carefully cut about a centimetre, centimetre and a half in. And what that allows us to do is fold our little bit of dough out. This tends to get a finer point on the end of our croissant. And the process afterwards is still the same. Just rolling that up nice and gentle. So using that method, you get a sharper little ear to your croissants and a longer bit. This would be a bit more traditional if we were going to curl the ends of our croissants, it gives us a bit more dough to work with in doing that curl. As you can see I've spaced them out nicely on the tray. One thing I forgot to mention before, once they're rolled, really important to make sure 
all the points are at the bottom of the tray, and it will sit on it. Um, <clears throat> that just stops our croissants from unrolling as they bake or as they prove, um, and you know keeps us that nice, um, nice finish. So to egg wash, just beat an egg with a, a little drop of water in there as well. Just take a really light amount of, of your glaze and just brush it over gently, making sure to go right up to the little segments. So with your croissants nicely glazed, I'm gonna leave these now to prove for around about one hour. So here are our croissants once they've uh, finished proving. And I just wanted to show you just another little test you can do. If I shake the tray, you see how the croissants just gently wobble. A really good sign that they're proved and they're ready to bake. So for baking the croissants, as you can see, I've got the temperature set to 200 degrees. So quite a hot oven. What I'm gonna be doing is with a, a jug, a little bit of water, um, I'm gonna be introducing some steam into the oven as I put the croissants in with the tray there that you can just see. I'll be pouring that in once I open the oven. It's gonna to start to boil straight away. That'll steam and that little bit of steam is just gonna help with the, the crust and the sort of flakiness of our croissants as they cook. So I'm just gonna load the croissants now. The oven's preheated and ready, 200 degrees. So I'm just fairly quickly put those in there. Uh, take my tray and you should almost straight away here and start to sizzle as I said that's just gonna develop a little bit of steam during the cooking which will help get nice flaky croissants so these are fresh from the oven now I wish you could smell it they smell incredible so my next step just to get them cool enough so we can have a taste is I'm just going to be transferring these to a little wire wrap. After all that time spent and all that effort, this should be your end result. We've got a lovely nice bit of colour on there, nice shape, and just listen to them. Fantastic. Hopefully you did enjoy this session. Hopefully you've gained some of, bit of knowledge and you can take something away. Um, I'd love to see all of yours. So any you make, please tag me um, on Instagram. I'm at tef underscore patisserie and on Twitter, tef underscore patisserie as well. Um, but yeah, please guys, uh, loads of nice pictures, tag me in them. And um, if you have any questions, you need any feedback, um, or you know a bit of troubleshooting during the making um, just hit me up with a message or anything like that um, but thanks for watching